to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Listen, for many of you, while you are seated here, let me tell you why it looks like God is not answering your prayer. It is because he has found out that there is nothing in your life that is interested in glorifying the Lord. There are many people here, you're not, be, you're not prospering, it's an act of God's mercy to you to still keep you relevant. Because if money touches your hand with this state of heart, you will be a casualty first to yourself. Jesus at the center of my life. Jesus at the center of my life. From beginning to the end, it will always be it's always been you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Koinonia, please hear me. Let me tell you this. If you think what God is doing in this ministry is just because a man of God is powerful called Joshua Selman, think again. Look at me. This is all of me you are seeing. It's not like there's part of me somewhere. This is it you are seeing. You are intelligent and you went to school. Can a man like this produce this result you are seeing? No. There are some results that men cannot produce. My dear people, even if you are not spiritual, we are educated. Let me tell you the secret. When you hide behind the cross and you say, Father, it is for your glory that this is about. This business I want to set up, I want to establish the biggest mall in Zaria, the biggest mall in Nigeria and the desire is that through the presentation of that excellence or whatever it is there are people who covenanted with God and say Lord your house is in need of resources can you trust me and they meant it and God said that's it clear the way and they woke up in the morning and stumbled into business opportunities that changed their lives in one night when you are talking to them as business people you will see the gaps in their knowledge you will know they are not supposed to get this result however the master has chosen because of the sincerity of their heart is someone learning now this is one of the biggest secrets in this ministry believe me that that lust and that desire I want this I want that I want this and you find out that you are strangely producing results powerful results but nobody in your family is safe through your result all that is happening in your family is just jealousy and envy something is wrong your presentation is not such your presentation is showing them I am better than you not Jesus is the one who is behind this is someone learning now? Yeah. A man of God met me one day and he had followed me.
teaching and I, I, I told him, I said, if God says I should close down Koinonia now, I will do it. And he laughed. He said, Apostle, you are bold though. I won't make that kind of statement. And then by next week, come and find out that uh, what if the devil uses a wrong you know, image and lies to you and all of that. And I told him, what are you afraid of? Your statement is a product of the fear of something. What are you afraid of? That's what you should solve. Okay, let's assume it was a lie and Satan said it and you close it. Then what? Your ego, your reputation. That's what needs deliverance. It's not about closing and opening the ministry. No, at all. For your glory, I will do anything just to see you to behold you as my king for your glory i will do anything just to see you to behold you as my king before we continue i want you in one minute to pray and say lord i don't know what may have been the purpose for my desire for power and for result some of you you just want to cure hardship some of you you are tired of being looked down on these things are not enough reason please pray in one minute lord search my heart yet again man of god are you praying apostle i want to travel to america what's all Apostle, I want to marry a multi-millionaire. Nothing wrong with that, but what for? Apostle, I think I need a car. Or I need a new car. What for? I want to complete my building project by the end of this year. What for? Do you want to be a celebrity or an ambassador? What are you looking for? Fame or to see the purposes of God lifted through your life? Someone pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you understand all I've taught so far? There is nothing wrong in desiring results. I've shown you from the scripture he says we are salt and he says we are light are we together in fact he even says if your salt loses its saltiness its ability to preserve its ability to add taste and value you will be thrown underfoot and trampled by men so God desires us to produce results more than we will ever desire but first things first the first thing to fix is to know that it is beyond seeing your good works they must glorify your father which is in heaven hallelujah let's touch on one more thing before we pray hmm. <laughs> i desire the father to be revealed and glorified through my life i desire jesus to be revealed and glorified it is our theme it is our anthem in this ministry jesus revealed and jesus glorified now very quickly i want to show you since we have settled the fact that god is not withholding results from your life the only thing he's withholding is you destroying yourself and jesus not being glorified through it now that we have gotten that clear let us take it a step further jeremiah chapter 9 verse 23 there are three biblical um, expressions of the glory of God through the life of a man if it is true that God can be glorified in a man then we need to be able to look in detail what are the expressions of glory that can find and must find expression in my life for god to be glorified and here prophet jeremiah taught us number one thus saith the lord 
let not the wise man the word glory there is the word boast let not the wise man glory in his wisdom so the first expression of glory that can help the saints to be glorified is wisdom he's not saying wisdom is wrong he's just trying to rearrange it relative to something higher which we just addressed so the first is let not the wise man glory in his wisdom everyone say wisdom number two neither the mighty man glory in his might say power that is the second expression of glory and then number three let not the rich man glory in his riches say wealth now please look up these three expressions must be captured in your life if the father is to be glorified in your life number one wisdom number two power number three riches or wealth give us amplified of that statement please jeremiah 9 23 let's see it from amplified it says thus saith the lord let not the wise and skillful person glory and boast in his wisdom and his skill number two let not the mighty and powerful person glory and boast in his strength and power number three let not the person who is rich in physical gratification and earthly wealth glory or boast in his temporal satisfaction and earthly riches relative to these three the bible says next verse 24 so it says let not the wise man glory in his wisdom so that is the first expression of glory wisdom number two let not the mighty man amplified says the one who is powerful so power every dimension of power supernatural power most especially is another expression of the glory of god and the third dimension is wealth hallelujah let me tell you what this is supernatural power seems to be the zenith that is what controls the spiritual realm wisdom is what controls the intellectual realm wealth is what controls the physical realm so he says if you want to see the glory of god revealed in and through your life holistically there must be captured in your life and your experience supernatural power you must sustain the ability to bring the realm of the spirit in its entirety under divine obedience you must be able to conquer the intellectual realm by outsourcing a level of wisdom that is higher than human wisdom and then the resources that take away limitation from your life physically that anyone who is able to capture within his space power wisdom and wealth and then on top of that the source and the basis for your confidence does not even become those things but that you know god now your life can be a true reflection of the glory of god i don't have all the time to deal with all of these things but we'll just touch a bit let's start with wisdom wisdom i've done several teachings on wisdom you can get them but just to touch a little bit on wisdom as an expression of god's glory hallelujah in revelation chapter 5 when you read from verse 12 revelation chapter 5 saying with a loud voice just let's go back to amplified uh, let's go back to kjv i meant to say verse 12 12 saying with a loud voice worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive for us now power riches wisdom strength honor glory blessings now you see that wisdom was one of the seven things that were purchased for us in redemption are we together so by redemption every believer in christ should have access 
to wisdom every believer in christ paul was praying over the church in ephesians chapter 1 and verse 17 i hope we're able to manage those outside if there is ever a need to squeeze them in here even if it's temporarily when the season and um it will be fair enough it's better for them to stay somewhere standing than to let's be sure that no matter what it is especially those who are at the edge that they are not affected by the rain it's better to be inconvenienced inside than to be convenienced outside so those who are especially at the edge of the canopy my apologies just to break so that we help these people let's not allow them even if it's to be at the at the edge no problem we all know that is the season and then there's the crowds of people everywhere it's only responsible that at least we are thoughtful praise the name of the lord are we together so paul was praying and he said ephesians 1 17 that the father of our lord jesus the father of glory may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom so wisdom is not just a mental state there is the spirit of wisdom you find that in isaiah 11 also and verse 2 the spirit of dominion the spirit of the lord then the next you find is the spirit of wisdom and understanding hallelujah this is very powerful and james chapter 3 from verse 15 the bible there we're not really doing an extensive study on wisdom just to connect it to the teaching on glory the bible tells us that there are three kinds or three levels of wisdom apostle james now that the first is the wisdom that is earthly earthly wisdom sophia it is called number two or four kinds really wisdom that is sensual just brain work common sense then there is wisdom that is devilish or demonic verse 16 we're reading to 17 it says for where there is envy and strife and there's confusion and every evil work then 17 says but the wisdom that is from above so there is the wisdom that is from above supernatural wisdom there is earthly wisdom there is sensual wisdom are we together and then there is demonic wisdom so that there is no confusion as to what we are talking about we are talking of wisdom that descends from above the bible says it is first pure peaceable gentle everybody say wisdom in first corinthians chapter 2 we'll begin our reading from verse 6 let's hurry up please first corinthians chapter 2 we'll begin from verse 6 apostle paul was teaching us and he said how be it we speak wisdom among them that are mature or perfect yet not the wisdom of this world nor of the princes of this world that comes to not seven it says but we speak the wisdom of god in a mystery and then he says even the hidden wisdom of god that was ordained or designed for our glory are we together now very very important so there is the wisdom that connects to the glorification of the saints so that in their being glorified the father will be glorified the wisdom that has been ordained for our glory is someone learning already say wisdom very very important in mark chapter 6 from verse 2 and 3 mark chapter 6 from verse 2 and 3 mark chapter 6 from verse 2 and 3 the bible says when the sabbath day was come he began to teach in the synagogue and many hearing him were astonished saying from whence had this man these things and what wisdom is this which is given unto him and even such mighty works that are wrought by his hands there is a relationship between wisdom and mighty works hallelujah what wisdom is this there is a level of wisdom listen to me ladies and gentlemen there is a level of wisdom that can be made manifest through a man and through a life and a destiny that is higher than your age your gender your exposure your level of experience and when you access that kind of wisdom please look at me 
it will be impossible for your life to be ordinary that anyone who sees that wisdom being displayed in and through your life they will have to glorify your father which is in heaven everybody say wisdom very very powerful let me give you two definitions of wisdom very quickly i love this definition it came in the place of prayer that wisdom is the supernatural ability to use the written and the inspired word please write it down wisdom is the supernatural ability to use the written and inspired word of god to make accurate decisions and to provide solutions to life problems i will take it again wisdom is the supernatural ability to use the written and the inspired word of god to make accurate decisions and to provide solutions to life's problems is called wisdom you know it is wisdom when you are able to make with it accurate decisions you know it is wisdom when you are able to use it to provide solutions someone say wisdom please look up decisions decide destiny i have taught you this again and again and that your decisions are products of your orientation products of the information that mold and make your belief system when you are able to access superior wisdom the wisdom of god it translates in the kind and quality of decisions that you make number two it it the wisdom of god is at work in your life to the degree to which you are able to provide supernatural solutions to problems in your own life and problems in the lives of others that means if your life is full of problems without answers there is bankruptcy of divine wisdom if your decisions keep leading you to pain and regret and trouble it means you are you don't have wisdom or you are using another kind of wisdom maybe earthly wisdom maybe sensual wisdom common sense maybe even diabolic wisdom but the wisdom from above will always take you above are we together yes wisdom most believers do not know how to access the wisdom of god that translates into making quality decisions personal decisions ministry decisions family decisions financial decisions corporate decisions and then provide supernatural solution let me tell you the truth in these end times if you depend just on wisdom that has come through your age or wisdom that has come just from school alone as important as that is or wisdom that has come through common sense get ready to recycle pain in your life because there is a way that seemeth right unto a man the bible says but the end thereof are the ways of death the wisdom of god is so powerful it will not look like it yet that is the way is someone hearing me the wisdom of god when supernatural wisdom comes god will make you walk around jericho seven times instead of fighting physically if you fight with the sword even if you win you will bleed there will be injuries and yet god can give you sweatless triumph at the instance of wisdom there are some battles just because they are battles does not mean you must fight mm -mm. the most important thing is that you win we need to pray and cry for wisdom my prayer as a leader my prayer as an individual all the time if i pray for myself is that god will give me wisdom i have seen the fruit of wisdom so far i have seen the fruit of wisdom in this ministry i have seen the fruit of wisdom in my life are we together now there are results that only wisdom can bring i wish i had the time please get my message on wisdom i've taught on that you need to pray and cry and say lord i am tired of making foolish decisions there are decisions that keep recycling my pain people I, I make decisions every day and those decisions don't move me forward you need to start making qualitative decisions one decision that buys 10 years for you 
one decision that buys 20 years one decision that buys long life one decision that buys influence you can have one decision like Esau that will sell your lifetime do you know it was a decision Esau took one decision using a temporary carrying a temporary a permanent treasure to solve a temporal problem we were saying it I think it was with the leaders that there are people the moment they are hungry they look at anything around their life that they can sell quickly they will carry a laptop of 130,000 and sell it for 10,000 because they want to smoke with it or eat with it that is the Esau dimension of foolishness are we together and you will eat in a restaurant 5,000 or whatever it is and your laptop is gone with all the information there there are people who carry wristwatches, carry their shoes and sell it. There are many other people who are making unwise decisions. Like leaving God for money. Foolish decision. Is that true? Allowing your spiritual life to go down because you are looking for fame. Foolish decision. We need to pray and cry for wisdom. Listen, let me tell you the truth. Living in today's world requires walking in wisdom because the variety of options are many and all of them look like god is later you'll find out that you have been wasting your time so that you would not waste 15 years of your life only to turn back and find out that i took a path that i thought was god but was not god there are preachers making decisions that will end them in trouble there are businessmen making decisions that will end them in trouble some of us today our loved ones respectfully speaking they took decisions that brought us into all kinds of demonic things decisions and then supernatural solutions how will people ignore you when your life begins to command solutions by the wisdom of god you are teaching you are guiding that the opening of your mouth are we together now is the communication of divine wisdom please lay your hand on your head if you don't mind and pray in one minute father i receive an impartation of divine wisdom i confess that my decisions are not superior it is very clear that from my decisions i have made mistakes some of you your wrong decisions is why you are where you are right now it removed 10 years from your life it removed glory and honor from your life someone is praying lay your hands on your head and decree and declare that in the name of jesus christ the glory of god revealed and expressed as the wisdom of god must find expression in my life tired of wrong decisions tired of wrong decisions tired of a life that is barren of results Someone is praying. Shabradiki palako sata prande gadosia. Hallelujah. How do you access the wisdom of God? Two principal channels, or three principal channels, really. Number one, through the word of God. Second Timothy three. Second Timothy three. I believe that's verse fifteen. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise what makes you wise the holy scriptures the holy scriptures does not make men foolish ladies and gentlemen for those who think that studying the Bible makes is, is, is a necessary luggage you have to understand that contained in this Word of God this Bible you see is the wisdom of god that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise unto salvation holy scriptures can make men wise number two you can ask for wisdom in prayer james was teaching us does any man lack wisdom he said let him ask let him ask let him ask if you lack wisdom ask ask of god Solomon asked for an understanding heart. Men can ask for wisdom. 
that's the second key very quickly so number one from scripture number two from number three impartation from the careers of this wisdom with proofs number three impartation yes sir you can receive impartation of divine supernatural wisdom from those who carry it there are people that carry divine wisdom and you can receive impartation from these men and women hallelujah most times when i have the privilege of meeting any of the fathers of faith if ever they ask me for anything to pray for i pray for wisdom i say the grace that is at work in their lives in various dimensions especially wisdom because let me tell you the truth when you ever get to a position of leadership you will learn that the variables for success are many and they are very confusing three roads can look the same and you find out that they are not the same you have to follow them is the sixth year of following them that will show you that it was foolishness you need god to help you if you look at it by the physical things you can put a and a a and b and it may not work you need wisdom hallelujah is someone getting this very very important let's recap again number one from scripture number two by asking in prayer and then number three let's look at an example of receiving impartation through wisdom numbers chapter 27 please from 18 and 20 very quickly and then we'll look at deuteronomy 34 9 numbers 27 from verse 18 and the lord said unto moses take thee joshua the son of Nun, a man in whom there is the spirit and lay your hands upon him uh-huh and then he says set him before Eleazar the priest and before all the congregation and give him charge in their sight verse 20 he says thou shalt put some of your honor upon him that all the congregation of the children of israel might be obedient so he was instructed to lay hands upon joshua let's see what came upon him deuteronomy chapter 34 and verse 9 deuteronomy 34 and verse 9 he says and joshua the son of Nun was full of what the spirit of wisdom how did he get it for moses had laid his hands upon him laying on of hands does not mean directly putting a hand on you it's a doctrine is captured the laying on of hands means a system of transfer are we together now yes you can lay hands prophetically you can lay hands directly impartation is powerful and tonight someone who came here to church in the name of jesus you will receive practically an impartation of the spirit of wisdom you will know that it has come upon you because in one month your results will show it will show in your ministry it will show in your life quality superior spiritual decisions in the name of jesus christ wisdom number two let's hurry up we need to pray we need to pray let not the wise man glory in his wisdom number two power what is power power is the supernatural force that is responsible for enforcing the will of god god's ability at work in a human and material vessel but power is a supernatural god's supernatural force and the assignment of power is to enforce the will of god that means power is only against what is against the will of god are we together the power of god does not just enforce everything the assignment of the power of god is to make sure the will of god happens in a life in a church in a ministry so if god is the one against you that power will not help you most people think power is just a force that creates changes randomly no supernatural power that comes from god only comes at the instance of his will and the assignment of the power of god is to see that his will for your life is enforced let not 
the strong man or the powerful man or the man with might romans chapter 1 and verse 4 it takes power to declare god to be the to declare jesus as the son of god romans chapter 1 and verse 4 let's start from 3 and 4 let's go to 3 and then we'll read 4 again my apologies is sad you are not following me here he said concerning his son jesus our lord which was made of the seed of david according to the flesh verse 4 he says and declared to be the son of god with power not with noise declared to be the son of god with power you want to declare that jesus is the son of god you need power Ah, Shaliba Rosaziata. When you stand before that sick body, you want to declare that he's Lord, the Son of the Living God. It will take more than grammar, it will take more than the excellency of speech. You will need power. Most believers lack power. It takes power. In Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3, the Bible himself speaking about God and speaking about the word of God. He said, Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person upholding all things by the word of his power upholding all things psalm 24 and verse 10 i can't read that scripture enough psalm 24 and verse 10 who is this king of glory the lord of hosts let's let's read verse verse 9 and 10. lift up your heads O ye gates even lift them ye everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in verse 10. it says who is this king of glory the lord of hosts he is the king of glory did i get something wrong there's one of it that says is the lord who is strong and mighty hallelujah verse 8 the lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle say strong and mighty he was the lord strong and mighty and is the lord strong and mighty that's why he became victorious in battle if you are not strong and mighty even if you are sincere and faithful you will still fail the requirement for dominion is more than sincerity of heart it is strength and might somebody says strength if you turn aside in the day of battle he said your strength is small someone needs to access superior supernatural power supernatural power is not for preachers my dear people demons don't look for only preachers they look for everybody you need power to survive the times today hallelujah who is this king of glory he's the lord strong and mighty Do you know many believers want to see supernatural results in their lives but they ignore the place of spiritual empowerment jesus himself spoke to the disciples he said tarry ye in jerusalem until ye be endued with power i have been teaching you for three years i taught you but all my lecture will sound like rubbish in the face of real life situations until you have power imagine them standing and looking at that guy at gate beautiful and say let me tell you something on the seventh day of three years ago jesus christ came to us and he taught us he said when you see that a man cannot stand number one show compassion point number two speak to the person kindly number three ask the person to stand up that the father can the man will just be looking at them the bible says he looked at them expecting to receive from today everybody who looks at you expecting to receive they will not be disappointed in the name of jesus christ please look at me there are some of you your family members have been looking at you for 10 years expecting to receive you told them you are born again and they said well i don't know the kind of christianity we are doing but i trust you and they have been looking at you on the ground for 10 years till now they have not received anything yet you have been preaching you have been talking stories but it's not backed up with power this night that power factor may it come upon your life hear me it says i am not ashamed of the gospel of christ 
for it is the power of God not the statement of God not just the message of God it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes I believe in the power of God I have seen what the power of God can do it can subdue principalities and powers it can shut the mouth of lions the power of God can lift a man from where he is to where he needs to be can I tell you sincerely you are not really a blessing if you ignore the power of God in your life how then will you be able to bless people most do you know that most of people's problems are spiritual so if all you have is intellectual solutions you will be limited intellectual solutions will only solve intellectual problems physical solutions will only solve uh, physical problems if i'm hungry i don't need power i need food yam and egg and rice and whatever i eat it it solves the problem but if you still eat it physically and you are not satisfied something else is wrong with you because you now see that the physical rice did not solve that problem if you lack blood lack blood like you're a medical person and they're giving you several pints of blood you are not bleeding and yet we don't know where the blood is going to that one now is no longer typhoid and malaria somebody somewhere is stealing from somewhere that is the ministry of the thief represented there at that point you need more than a drink what do you need shout it power that's right believe me the times that we live in those who lack power will fall by the wayside hallelujah those who lack power mysterious problems are being unleashed from hell to the earth and you see people carrying problems that they cannot explain my leg is paining me from leg pain the person sits down and die does leg pain kill no that is more than a medical problem my dear people you ask medical doctors right now the medical doctors are becoming more spiritual when they diagnose a patient once twice they will tell you listen what church do you attend go and fight a man of god quickly because they themselves are learning the enemy has done this the enemy has done this the enemy has caused division in this family that quarrel between father and mother is not normal there is a normal misunderstanding in marriage but this one now is being empowered by a demon spirit the devil wants to cause trouble no that barrenness situation is not just a natural cause of time this is the devil trying to raise his ugly head can i tell you every time you see satan take back wisdom bring out power the language that conquers satan is power hear me you don't use wisdom for spirits no you use wisdom for men wisdom is in the realm of men when you are dealing with the cosmos you need wisdom but when you are dealing with the realm of the spirit take back wisdom and bring power hear me listen as a man of god somebody is telling you this is what is happening i'm collecting my salary i go back home and i'm applying every principle and something happens do you know respectfully speaking in spite of the strike that has happened now when lecturers are paid it should be some accumulated salary there are people who have all kinds of wicked spirits waiting they will never have any problem until that arias is paid suddenly mysterious problems arise everybody becomes sick even if it's 10 million it must finish and then they are fine do you need wisdom no you have been advising spirits that's why they have not gone we were never given the mandate to advise them you think they are dull no the sons of Skiva came with nonsense and they were speaking english and the demons said paul we know jesus we know they begged jesus and jesus made one utterance go and that was it listen if you allow the devil deceive you and say i am not in ministry so power is not for me i am just a mother with five children i am just a businessman dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message 
do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our home page for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaskade Bashkana Kata Branda Kateka Kos. Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take a legata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.